Welcome to DeltaCast Tutorials. Today I'm going to be applying a thumb spica non-removable. Now for this particular occasion, I don't want the patient to uh, take off the splint, but it's important that we keep the position right. Now again, this is for injury to the phalange, the metacarpal, the carpals, and it's important that we get this patient in the right position. Now in particular, at times there could be a scaphoid fracture where there's a high risk of AVN, vascular necrosis, male union or non-union. So we really wanna get that position right. The position we're gonna get that patient is about 20 to 30 degrees of extension at the wrist. And then at the same time, the thumb and index finger are gonna be in direct opposition, like you're trying to hold a bottle of some sort. Again, there's injuries where you will want this thumb extended or more flex down, but on this particular occasion, we're gonna have the index finger in direct opposition to the thumb. When you do a thumb spica, we want to make sure that once we cover this up, that it is really immobilizing the thumb and is not having the patient just appearing like they're doing a hula hoop or something. So with that, we're going to go ahead and examine the patient's extremity, make sure there's no any abrasions or any other thing that can cause harm to the patient. All jewelry is removed off the patient's extremity and let the patient know, of course, that it's going to get warm and so they won't be alarmed. And let's go ahead and get this started. So let's measure the patient. Now you can use a tape measure if you want to, or you can use padding. I'm gonna be applying padding and a stockinette. A stockinette is optional, if you will, but the splint is gonna be measured from the tip of the thumb all the way to the one or two inches from the antecubital space, or if it was somebody's really small or super tall, not so much where it digs all in the bicep. Now you do have a choice of having the IP joint exposed, or all the way to the tip, but if you really wanna protect them, go all the way to the tip so that they won't have any articulation of that thumb. So I get the uninjured extremity and I'll measure from the tip of the thumb all the way to how far proximal I want the splint to go. And one of the questions is how far distal do you wanna have it on the thumb? Well, just a hair pass it so that their thumb is not exposed if you're gonna include the thumb all the way so that they won't bump it to something else to cause further harm to themselves. So this is my template of how far distal, how far proximal I'm gonna do that. Put that aside. Let's get some stock in it and apply it on the patient's extremity. Again, that's optional. That just keeps everything enveloped extra neat. And sometimes patients feel irritated from any type of padding that's applied on the extremity. So with our stockinette length, you can get really uh, meticulous about it, but it's gonna be the length plus 50% to have enough coverage, okay? So this is my length of my stockinette. You can actually apply a one inch for the thumb if you want to. So with this, I'm going to apply the stockinette. You'll roll it up. Now remember, they may be in a really acute situation where they're very, very tender. So there's two ways to apply the stockinette. You can actually put your hand through it. Okay. And grab their extremity and then roll it down. Or you can just put it on, have the patient position in such a way where their arm is in a neutral position, no supination or pronation. Okay and you just slide that on like that. That's a common way, but if they're in an acute situation where they're really, really tender, you can just go ahead and put your hand around their hand. If your hand is small, just grab a little portion of their hand and just slide that on without jiggling their wrist too much to cause further harm to them. And then I'll just slowly lower this down. And as you can see, my splint is gonna go from here, but you see I have enough to pull down on the extremity to envelope everything and to make it all extra neat on the patient. You can cut your hole prior to, or you can cut it after you have the stockinette already applied. Just find the base of the thumb there, pull that away a little bit from the patient's extremity, and then just go ahead and cut. I like to just get it and fold it to the side so they know that I do see the end of their thumb. And then there we go, we're ready to go. Just slide that, get that extra neat again. And like I said earlier, you can apply a, a little one inch for the thumb. Now let's apply our padding. 
we're going to just apply it with the roll to the sky this way or this way like a snail we're going to apply it from the wrist hand and to the thumb again from the wrist to the hand to the thumb and then take care of the whole forearm Again, what you want to do is always keep positioning the patient so that, number one, it's a memory for them. If they're in a lot of pain, they're going to need a lot of help. So if you cannot keep them positioned, get an assistant to help you. So I'll start at the wrists, go to the hand, go ahead and tear this, go through that palmar space, make sure it looks kind of neat there and flush to the extremity. Now let's go ahead and take care of the thumb. Go all the way to the distal tip of the thumb. I'm using a three inch. A lot of people prefer a two inch. So it's gonna be up to you. So then I'll do this, hold that there, and I'll just tear that halfway or three fourths, go around the thumb and do it again. Now I have that taken care of. Now let's start going down or proximal. Go through that web space. Now, when you're applying the pad and you want to have at least two layers, a minimum, and then max four layers. And then after you get done, you want to palpate over the bony promise to ensure you have enough. Now, if you've been in a splint before or a cast, they feel everything. So you want to make sure that there's hardly any wrinkles as you apply this. Now, as I go down proximal, I'm gonna apply what we call the 50-50 coverage. And that's just overlaying 50% of what I just put on. If you miss a spot, like for instance, it's too thin there, that's called a shadow. We'll go back and just reapply more padding in that area to make sure that there's no issues that wrinkles can uh, cause problems. Now we apply the padding on the patient, and if you palpate over the uh, bony problems and you feel like it's just a little bit still prominent, you can apply more padding, or you can go ahead and apply some foam padding that we offer. And so I just take off the adhesive backing and put it on areas where the patient needs a little bit more padding. And on this particular occasion, on the bony problems of the ulnar styloid. Now, you have a choice. You can either pull this down now and put your splint on top of that, or you can wait till you get it on and then pull your stocking at edges down. So let's go ahead and apply the thumb spike a portion on the patient. What I'm getting ready to do now is go ahead and cut my thumb spike a splint. So if it's been cut before, that's why I'll start my measurement, okay? Get my template that I cut previously, and this is where I'm gonna cut. Now, if you're gonna cut it down, make sure there's no fiberglass hanging out or any of the substrate hanging out, then you want to give yourself at least an extra inch. If you're gonna just pull the padding past the substrate, then you cut exactly what you measured. Get your orthoglass scissors, and go ahead and cut that. Now let's close this up. And I'll do that by either stuffing it down like this and then close it off. Make a nice little seal there. Get your closer and make sure that it's upside down T and close that down on the uh, packaging. All right, so go ahead and remove your orthoglass from the package. If you notice, this is the fiberglass that's hanging out what I talked about earlier. We do not want that hanging out, especially for the thumb spiker because we don't want them to touch their face. This is gonna get extremely hard. So you got two ways to take care of that. You can peel this down, cut down like a quarter of an inch. Okay, as such. Now it's not hanging out or you can go ahead and stretch the padding past the substrate. Now it's not hanging out at all, okay? 
Now, then you can have some different alternate ways to take care of this. There's a certain preference where you can actually cut down more. And now we have a nice edge there with our fold back and making sure there's no way for that stuff to stick out, as far as the substrate to stick out at all. And I'll fold that on the patient and have it secured, okay? Now let's activate this. Get my towel ready. Just dip this in the water. You don't need a lot of it because you got to get all the water out of it. And let's distribute the water on itself. Squeeze that over your bucket or over a sink. And let's get the water out of it now. Roll it in a towel. Get all the extra moisture out of the padding. And check your edges again to make sure that nothing is hanging out as far as the substrate. And as you can see here, it's down pretty far, but I'll use that to my advantage in just a second. So now what I'll do, and since the splint is gonna be here, I can fold this down now. I'll fold this over, put that where it needs to go, and secure the proximal edge. And this is gonna be all aligned on the radial aspect of the extremity. Grab my elastic bandages. This is a two inch. People prefer the two inch when you're doing like the thumb, especially the little fingers, because it's easier to go through the web space. So I'll start on the wrist. And what I want to do here now is just move this splint up so that it's a little bit here past the thumb, almost like a C motion, if you will, C position, and secure this around the thumb. Notice regardless, I folded the uh, padding down to make sure there's no fiberglass hanging out of the edge or the substrate hanging out of the edge. Go around that thumb. Go through the web space. And now start going proximal. 50% coverage of the elastic bandage as I go along. Now I have a little bit left over. Your choice, you can cut it off and tape it down or just finish it up and go back distal, but ease up on your pull. And remember, as you're pulling this, if you can see through this, you're probably pulling a little bit too much. Now let's get that position. Again, our position was 20 degrees of extension and we want the index finger and thumb in direct opposition. So let's do that in different ways. What we can do is go ahead and grab the hand, okay? Not extremely hard, but just grab it. And we're gonna take that patient out what we call ulnar deviation. If their hand is hanging down, lift their hand up by doing one of these motions. Just slowly lift their hand up so it's not too aggressive on them. And then let's get some extension of the hand. So I'll just get her extension now, about 20 to 30 degrees. And then I'll slowly lower her thumb down. If her thumb was up in the air, if you will, or too far extended, then I'll just go ahead and just lower her thumb down in this motion. And then at the end, I'll secure that thumb, hold it just a little bit, now remember, the faster you put this on, the splint material is gonna be really soft, so it's gonna be easy for it to contour around the patient's extremity. So you can hold that to keep all that articulation of the thumb movement. Now we're gonna hold this for three to five minutes till it sets, or 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the patient's maturity. Again, the best thing is to verify with the position if uh, they need to change it. 
And once we're done, we'll check everything out and we'll do what we call a fax check on it. And what that is, is just function of the extremity. Can they move certain positions? So this is not part of the injured portion of the hands. So I wanna make sure that these can move fairly easy, but at the same time, we're taking care and immobilizing the thumb. We have good articulation of her arm so that she can bend her arm at least 90 degrees so that it won't dig all in the biceps. And then as far as checking for any type of artery blood flow, we can't do that because the spleen is over on the radial aspect. So we'll go straight to capillary refill, which is the C, and sensation at the same time. So I'll just check this, a blanch test of each of the digits. And at the same time, asking the patient, do they feel me touching their fingers? If it's a little baby or what have you, that's why we rely on the blanch test. Or if it's a pediatric patient, they're not able to speak or what have you, a patient incapacitated, we're going to rely on the capillary refill or blanch test to ensure the blood flow is coming back readily. If there's any slowdown for dealing with medical uh, procedures, then we will verify with the provider physician, clinical person, if this is what we want, how snug, it may be too snug on the patient. And what we just did is a thumb spica non-removable using orthoglass. I use stockinette and padding. Stockinette is optional. You know, sometimes the patient may feel irritated from padding or anything that's placed on their extremity. So the stockinette secures it, keeps it neat, the whole splint. And then I put padding on there to decrease any type of wrinkles that can bother the patient. And then we concentrate on the position. And the position is index finger in direct opposition and the wrist in about 20 to 30 degrees of extension there. And that is the thumb spica using orthoglass. If you need any additional support or training regarding DeltaCast products, contact your local rep or look for us on www.sd.com.